And Notorious premieres Monday on Netflix. Netflix strikes again. Russell Peters joins us at the table. Because, Russell, when your name was brought up in a meeting, I have to say, I went, you mean Russell Brand, right? Yeah. I know you're not talking about <laughs> Russell Simmons, but you mean Russell Brand, the comedian. And they were like, no, the, this is the first Russell, the real Russell. <laughs> <laughs> the Russell that matters. The Russell that matters. But, you know, all jokes aside, and I don't want to be offensive, but I was asking, have you heard, have you heard? And a lot of people would say, no, no, no. Right. Or new. Orin, yes, Orin. Did. Orin, where's Orin? There's Orin. My, husband. Hey, Orin. my husband's a big fan. And, and her husband. And her husband. I'm, I, I, I'm doing well in the uh, husband community, apparently. <laughs> it's but always you, the husbands, never the wives. <laughs> but do you, do you compare yourself to sort of like soccer in terms of how it is in this country? Yeah. Huge I mean, the, all over. Huge around the world, and you can still fill arenas in America, but they kind of don't care. How did you discover the internet as a place to sell comedy? Well, I never did. Somebody put that special. That was 2003. Uh -huh. The one that the first clip. Somebody put it on YouTube. Somebody put it on YouTube. It was I think it was right before YouTube. There was just file sharing, and yeah. then YouTube came into play, and then my whole world changed. Mm -hmm. You grew up in Canada. Mm -hmm. You're Indian. That you is make, correct. You make a lot of you make a lot <laughs> of <laughs> you make Canadian so first and then Indian. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm interested in this in your bar because you say you were bullied a lot mm -hmm. uh, as a kid, and yet you use a lot of ethnic jokes in your routines, right? Right. Well, I was uh, because I was bullied. I was always conscious about not being a white kid and then I hung around all the black kids and they never bothered me because I think they were confused by it too. Yeah. They were like, like what are you? They were like what does this black kid have straight hair? No, huh? no and you said a lot of people even today think you're Spanish and get offended when they talk to you and you can't speak Spanish. Yeah it happens all the time but thank God my daughter's half so you know she speaks Spanish and uh -huh. But she's getting a she's getting a weird accent because she's born in America, but she sounds like an immigrant now. Uh -huh. So she'll call me for like, Dad, that Jew coming over? And I'm like, No, sweetheart, no Jews are coming over. Uh. But you, I think your dad too gives you a lot of wealth of, of uh, material. He sure because did. Because you've got a great bit that you do when you talk about growing up with white kids, mm -hmm. how white kids are disciplined in their homes, and when you tried it at your house with your dad, your dad well, had other ideas. Oh, I think that white kids weren't disciplined, and that yes. was the problem. <laughs> I was getting bad advice from them, and now I'm trying to figure out the balance between uh, uh, my daughter and my parents and then the white parents, and now I kind of admire white parents because white parents will have conversations with their children. Yeah, they do time out. Yeah, well, they, they'll, they'll talk to their kids like they're humans. Yeah. And how are you disciplined? <laughs> yes. oh, I, I don't, I, I, now that I think about it, I never had any conversations with my dad. There was never a, so how was your day? Yes. Yeah. The only time I got that is if I skipped school and he knew it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Do, do the audiences differ in terms of what they think is funny? Um, Whether it's domestic or foreign or Asia versus mm -hmm. Europe versus Latin America? Well, no, the, the thing is everybody, I get the most diverse audience you'll ever see, and everybody's waiting for their group to be called oh, out, so to speak, you know? Yes. And then the only complaints I ever get are, uh, hey man, you didn't do any Lithuanian jokes. I'm like, oh man, I had 40 minutes on Lithuanians. But where did your accent come from too, Russell? Because I love what you said in your piece right there, that, you know, just say whatever you're gonna say, say it angry and it's okay. You well, can do Chinese, you can do Jamaican, go ahead. Right, well, I don't speak another language. Yes, but, it, but if you know what another language sounds like, you can fake it, right? Like I'm going to India in a couple of weeks yeah. and, and there's over 200 languages in India and sadly I don't know any of them. Um, but if I got stuck, I could fake it because I know what it sounds like and I'll just say, act angry. So I'm like, <laughs> and even the Indians are like, I don't know this dialect, but this man is very angry at the moment. And Italian. Uh, Italian. Italian. Same with Italians. You could, if you don't speak Italian, you go to, you know, you find an Italian guy and you could just use the hand gestures and, and sound. <laughs> you just end with vowels and, uh, and look like you're angry and you're angry and you're focused. What and did finally George Carlin tell you? Finally, finally do Jamaican because I think you're Jamaican. Are you Jamaican, Gail? Um, no. No, oh, I'm just checking. <laughs> Well, this is for all. Everybody. I have nothing against Jamaica. No, no. But no I'm not. No, no one's ever asked me that. That totally no. threw me. Got they, they, yeah, no, this is for everybody in Brooklyn. <laughs> yeah. uh, good morning. This is CBS Morning Show. <laughs> That's got it. Yes. First, finish your party and drink your coffee, <laughs> and go on to work. Go on to work. Yeah. You said, asked him about Carlin. Who, what did George Carlin, Carlin tell yeah. you? Carlin. Um, well, I met Carlin in 2000, uh, 1992, and I was. I'd only been doing stand-up three years. And I was, I'm still such a huge Carlin yeah. fan. And I bumped into him on the street in Toronto, and I, and I was, and I just geeked. 
And I was just then, I, and I'm like, hey, do you want to come to my house for dinner? My mom will make you Indian food. I'm, I didn't know what I was saying. And then, uh, and then I was like, hey, you know, maybe one day we'll work together. He goes, you never know, kid, maybe one day. And then uh, you cut to 10 months before he passed away. Yeah. He was doing uh, warm-up shows in Hermosa Beach, California. And the club knew me, and they knew that I was a big fan, so they asked if I wanted to come on the show. And yeah. I asked if I could host it, and they let me host it. And when I introed him, my nice. chin started quivering, yes. and I got teary-eyed. And But here you yeah. are, though, Russell Peters, the number three highest paid comedian did you ever think you could make this much money I never I never it? thought I, I, I never thought I'd be on a CBS morning show how about that here I, you are. I, 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 I just genuinely would have been happy you know doing the circuit and being complete <laughs> no name I, I was just happy doing what I'm doing yeah. so with or without this I'm, I'm, I'm the same guy uh, CBS think. morning show is pleased to have you yeah. well thank you yes, we are we yes. are nice we really are thank you thank you Russell Peters I'm laughing because when you said you never thought you'd be on CBS this morning, Chris Licht, who has no sense of humor, mm -hmm. said in my ear, and neither did Gail. <laughs> and here we are. Here we are, Russell, you and me, baby. I like That's it. That's right. I like it.